Uh, top, top, top was good, y'all. So, uh, Chef Prime here. And this one is going to be very interesting because I've been hearing, I've been hearing these whispers of this grocery store, especially a little more prevalent on social media. Uh, if I'm pronouncing this right, Air Airwan, but this grocery store, I got I got so many mixed emotions about this. So obviously they sell the most expensive everything that you can expect at a grocery store. By far, there's nobody compared to these this this store, this this grocery store. Uh, I believe it's in Beverly Hills or some part of California where it's you know, the average person there is like a multimillionaire. But I think that this is like a social experiment. Personally, I think that whoever created this concept have done this to see how far they can push people before they say, look, this is crazy. It has to stop. I've seen some of their, their uh, videos on like TikTok where people going in little little packs of pre-made food thirty dollars uh milk like ten twenty dollars you know what i mean like it, it's it's so crazy so i am very interested and intrigued to see this video to to kind of understand this particular business model you know and if y'all know hey if y'all know this store, the grocery store, just leave your comments below, please, because this is the one where I'm really going to be reading, you know, as much of y'all comments as possible to get your personal feelings on what you have seen here. If you're the kind of person who likes eating food, you've probably noticed that the price of groceries has been a little on the high side lately. However, if you're the kind of person who shops at Erwan, you might not Erwan. have noticed at all. Because at Erwan, everything is always expensive. What the hell is Erwan, you ask? Well, today we're going to take a look at what it's like to shop at Erwan, the most expensive grocery store in America. Let's go, let's go. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other pricey stores you would like to hear about. Okay, time to stock up on avocado toast. Erewhon Markets is high profile enough to have been referenced in a joke on South Park, but it's not exactly a household name. In fact, most Americans have never even seen one. So for the record, Erewhon is a chain of luxury grocery stores with 10 locations, all in California, nine in Los Angeles, and one in nearby Pasadena. With that little old lady, the Beach Boys couldn't stop. Okay, okay, so it's only in California, uh, targeting the F, the ultra affluent neighborhoods. Uh, Pasadena, the the average house out there, I believe, is like two million, like probably one point five on the low end, on average. Uh, two million on average, I guess. Um, uh, and obviously more, um, LA, we already know the, the cost of living out there is millions and millions of dollars if you want to buy, but if you want to rent, it's still going to be a couple of grand for something like a shoebox size. So, okay. So they know their markets. I'm surprised though, that they haven't popped one or a few three, five up in, uh, New York. Um, I'm very, I'm very surprised. And there's other affluent neighborhoods across the United States. I don't know why they would just put on. I don't know. Is this new? Is this, huh? Let me let me see. Is this a new concept? They just doing a soft rollout. I mean, California is obviously big enough to put ten, but I would have kind of spread the love around, you know. Stop crowing about. And when we say luxury, we mean just that. Erwan's prices make Whole Foods seem like a Dollar General. You'd think that would drive customers away, but it. It might, you know, my eyes are playing trick on me. I could have sworn I seen like a thing of butter or something like that for like thirty four, thirty five dollars. Am I am I going crazy? Did did my eyes play, <laughs> did my eyes play tricks on me? 
Am I really? Did I see? I don't know. I don't know. This is this is crazy. Mostly does the opposite. Erwan's ridiculous prices have made it the choice of celebrities and influencers, creating a buzz around the brand across the internet and all over the world. Now, Erwan is a grocery store, but it's nothing like the big grocery chains most Americans are familiar with. It does have aisles of produce and store branded pantry goods, and it does count food like ranch flavored kale chips, buffalo cauliflower, and the sushi sandwich among its most popular items. But at Erwan, groceries aren't really the point. People come to Erwan. A sushi sandwich. $21 for one sandwich, y'all, and people is paying this. Just as much for the store's wide variety of powders, gels, and supplements, which include kitchen staples like maca powder, sea moss gel, and chlorophyll, among many, many other. Oh, snap. They got sea moss and everything in there. Wow. Talk about healthy. That's dope. I actually, wow, sea moss. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. Others. Erwan locations are also popular for their cafes and tonic bars, where customers can sip on a smoothie or nibble on a snack while they shop. And unlike your corner grocery store, Erwan is also known for their trendy branded merchandise, which includes things like tote bags and stylish hats. And all right, y'all. All right, pause, pause. We ain't, we ain't going to get down on those bodegas. Don't even play yourself out of pocket on that one. Keep it over on that L.A richie joint that y'all talking about right now you, you ain't playing no bodegas over here that's that's crazy what the hell they they done is that balenciaga they did a co-branding deal oh my god this store is crazy they did a co-branding <laughs> a grocery store did a co-branding deal with Belisiaga? Oh, what the hell? Like, that's wild. Wow. I'm just, I'm just talking about a, a huge, like, like, that's just crazy. Eh, big deal. At Kroger, you can get X-Men totes. As we mentioned, Erwan isn't for the budget conscious among us. In fact, you might say it's one of those places where if you have to ask what anything costs, you probably shouldn't be shopping there. That exclusivity is a big part of its brand. For example, your average supermarket will charge you somewhere in the neighborhood of $3 for a 16 ounce dispenser of a recognizable brand of liquid hand soap. Erwan's store brand hand soap, on the other hand, costs 26 bucks. Now in all fairness, There is nothing in all fairness about that price. Look, y'all, soap is soap is soap. Is soap is soap is soap. Same damn chemicals mixed up in the same type of bottle, just with a different label on it. Soap is soap is soap. A little hand soap for 20. Ugh. Erwan Soap, according to their website, is eco-friendly and crafted with cedarwood, lavender, orange, and rosemary essential oils. But for damn near $30, it had better make your skin bulletproof like Luke Cage, or to a lesser extent, blank man's costume. And it's not just the soap. A six-pack of Coke can cost somewhere around 6 or $7 at a regular supermarket. But a okay. six-pack of Erwan Soda, which comes in ginger, green apple jasmine and watermelon lime among other flavors will run you 35 big ones roughly six dollars per bottle why so
You know what stepping into this store is like? It's like getting into a fight with someone and realizing you're way out of your league. You're way out of your weight class. It's like getting into a fight with somebody and you just realize, damn, I'm going to lose this fight. And bad. And bad. For a six pack, six dollars each. So much. Well, according to the website, the soda is packed with 24 probiotic strains. And it supports a healthy microbiome, enhancing digestive wellness. Pretty sure Coke doesn't do that. But that is just the tip of the eye-poppingly priced iceberg at Erwan. A gallon of milk will set you back $20. A 64-ounce bottle of water is $26. And 32 ounces of orange... Tell me this. How is a bottle of water more expensive than a gallon of milk? And how is both items over $20? That cow better have some magical pixie dust in that milk after it's processed because that is crazy i i don't get it that's French wild. juice cost 15 dollars breakfast has already cost you a tank of gas and you haven't even made it out of the beverages yet speaking of which if that sounds nuts to you, wait till you hear what the nuts cost. It's 25 smackaroos for 18 measly ounces of almonds. Also, 17 ounces of balsamic vinegar will run you 50 clams. 16 ounces of yogurt will cost you 20. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We got to let this madness stop. How is a small jar of balsamic vinaigrette, fifty dollars. And what is this? A bottled coconut yogurt, twenty-four dollars. So you go into this grocery store. You're pretty much what you know, because I'm a I'm a frivolous guy compared to this this madness. So what a typical person would spend, say. $300, $400 on like a full cart of groceries. Uh, and that's being very conservative uh, in this time frame. So you might as well 10X that. So you're spending about probably a grand, $1,500 on a grocery trip. If you're trying to fill up your entire refrigerator with their stuff, probably no, not even a grand. You're probably spending like three grand, honestly for a full cart worth of stuff. And people are going in and buying this at scale because obviously they're still in business. That's crazy. Before simoleons and 32 ounces of maple syrup will drain you of 43 greenbacks. Heck, the same rotisserie chicken that even Whole Foods only has the stones to charge $12 for costs $22 at Erwan. Which is all to say, coupon clippers need not apply. But why did being so expensive most human beings can't shop there become part of Erwan's DNA? To answer that, we need to go back in time a bit. Do you like minting money? Well, the lithium oh, business man. is for you. The lithium margins right now are practically software margins. Yeah, sorry for that little commercial. In 1872, the English writer and critic Samuel Butler released what would wind up being his most famous and influential work, the satirical novel Erewhon. An anagram for nowhere, Erewhon was the name of a fictional country where every citizen is required to maintain their own health and can be criminally prosecuted for getting sick. 
That connection to the idea of a person maintaining their own health inspired Aveline and Michio Kushi to use the name Erewhon for the new health food-oriented supermarket they founded in Boston, Massachusetts in 1966. The Japanese couple, who today are widely credited with kicking off the macrobiotic lifestyle movement, were concerned that the nutritional value of food had been declining since at least the early 1900s. Hmm. It was those concerns, and a desire to monetize those concerns, that led the pair to open the first Erwan. The original location was not much more than a small stall with a counter and a few shelves in a basement market. But the business was successful, and the Kushis were able to quickly relocate, first to a larger building across the street, and later they packed up the truck and moved to Los Angeles. California, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. But life in the big city. Okay, so that's cool. That's cool. So we got their, their origin story. Started in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, that's dope. And they could have, they could have, I don't know, are they still in uh, Massachusetts or did they shut down operations there and move exclusively to California? But that would have been cool if, you know, I got to do a little bit more research on this even after this uh, video. But uh, I want to see if they're still headquartered in Boston, but just focus their growth strategies throughout California because that's where the money was or is or whatever. <laughs> California is in a, in, in a heap of mess anyway. But y'all get what I'm saying. It was tough and the initial success was followed by decades of financial struggle. The business was mismanaged, and it didn't help much that the Kushis were holding the macrobiotic diet as a cure for AIDS, which it is not. The store went bankrupt and then was sold to employee Tom De Silva in the early 1980s. De Silva and his wife then turned Erwan into a kind of new agey place where you couldn't buy red meat because it was poisonous, but you could buy American spirit cigarettes because they were organic. Wait, has anyone tried smoking red meat? But the Erewhon story really begins in 2011, when De Silva's widow sold the last remaining store to Tony and Josephine Antochi. The Antochis had just made a fortune selling their Italian foods business and bought the LA location on what was essentially a whim. Nonetheless, the savvy couple would be the ones to turn the place into the upscale supermarket we know it as today. The Antochis didn't change Erwan into a trendy shopping destination for people with disposable income overnight. The transformation arguably started in 2014, when they opened their second location in the foothills of Calabasas, which is the kind of place you're likely to run into a Kardashian. Then in 2018, Kanye West mentioned the store in a tweet, sending legions of his fans scrambling to get Erwan merch, which at the time only existed in bootleg form. But what really helped turbocharge the chain's popularity was the COVID-19 pandemic, which arrived in 2020 and made grocery stores one of the few places outside of the home people could still visit. The pandemic encouraged Erwan to make more use of online influencers. And to that end, they partnered on a celebrity smoothie with the well-known TikTok creator, Tinks. If you're over the- Side note, side note. If y'all are looking at a uh, grocery store, because those are, uh, you know, if it's managed right, great profit centers uh there's a franchise model that you could get into a grocery store is called save a lot save a lot um look into that just google it save a lot franchise in the search engine it'll pop up and uh, you know if that's your thing hey you can move those and there's other uh grocery store franchises that you can also equally look into that gives off different models and, and options for people more bigger stuff like save a lot and they got smaller boutique ones uh as well so you know i mean the food business is always good business the age of 30 most of these words are a total mystery but the promotion was so successful that celebrity smoothie partnerships have since become a regular centerpiece of the air one brand celebrities like bella hadid and courtney kardashian have gotten in on the fun and the smoothies which will lighten your wallet by somewhere between 11 and 20 dollars remain erwan's most buzzworthy product in 2022 for example erwan exploded on tiktok after the Haley bieber endorsed strawberry glaze smoothie went viral kicking off a tidal wave of erwan themed content that earned hundreds of millions of views the combination of the high prices and the high-profile endorsements have made Erwan the kind of place where celebrities are regularly spotted. 
including folks like Miley Cyrus, Kara Delevingne, Jake Gyllenhaal, ASAP Rocky, and Hillary Duff. The okay, 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 okay. I get it. I get it. I get it. So what they're essentially is doing is leading by influencers. So people know that all of the uh, California, Hollywood elites uh, regularly go there to shop. So this is nothing more than brand imaging um, to attract people because, hey, on one, you want to shop there as a regular person because you get a chance to possibly bump into a Ben Affleck, uh, or whoever's the who's who's, uh, Kanye West, Kardashians, <clears throat> whoever. You, you get a chance to bump into, you have a high probability of bumping into a celebrity. Uh, and on the other hand, like let's let's really dig a little deeper than that. You know, a lot of average people want to feel important, not all the time, but sometimes. You know, Mo most of the time, you want to. People want to. You know, the average people that have average jobs and have average rates of of pay, they want to go out to these different places and feel special, feel important feel like hey i'm one of the elites too that it's a feeling that derives from this this is where you get impulse buying this is where you get people that make you know 60 70 thousand dollars a year shopping at gucci fendi prada the da 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 and they they just they know they cannot afford that lifestyle it's not sustainable but they just want to feel included they want to feel serviced because when you go into ferragamo where you going to uh ralph lauren or uh double rl specifically when you go into these high-end or bespoke places uh there's a high level of service and hence you know what you're paying for as well outside of the product that you're buying so you take that typical thought process and sales strategy from these super elite uh retailers and you take it and you put it into the grocery store and then this thing is uh created is born uh it's the same it's the same outlook you know if you go into hermes you're going to get the same treatment, the same outlook as if you go into this Irwin uh, grocery store. Very smart marketing deploy. Very smart. You could go to a Kroger. You could go to a Food Lion. You could go to Sea Town. You could go to all these other grocery stores to, to get your food. But hey, you could go to Irwin and everybody know when you walk out with with uh erwin bags it's the same as walking out with your favorite designer printed on a bag it's the same thing i love it man i love it capitalism will always be king the company makes no apologies for the fact that it caters to wealthy celebrities and influencers and the strategy has cemented the chain's image as a trendier more exciting version of whole foods it's mm -hmm. basically Cartman land for rich people. So what's it like to shop where Jake Gyllenhaal shops? Well, Erwan locations have often been described as beautiful. The stores are relative. <laughs> Man, I know my stuff. I promise y'all I didn't pre-watch this video. I'm, I'm watching it at the same time as y'all. I just know these different industries. Now, remember what I just previously said, and let's see if they connect the dots as well. I'm dying to see. Relatively small, and according to the company, each location is specifically designed for the surrounding neighborhood. Keeping with the greater theme, the interiors are done with natural materials, and areas like food kitchens are left exposed. 
reassuring consumers the prepared foods have nothing to hide. The shelves are lined with picturesque products that have packages which would appease the palate of even the pickiest graphic designer. And the produce often looks virtually untouched, which is probably because most of it is. That's because most of Erwan's clientele don't come to Erwan for the groceries. Prepared foods are much more popular, and it's not unusual to find those sections of the store far more crowded. As we've repeatedly mentioned, the prices almost defy reason. One TikToker found that even a relatively small haul of groceries could cost nearly $400, while another spent over $1,000 on just the ingredients for nachos. Although, in fairness, they did use an entire tin of caviar in their recipe. For those with weeping wallets, $100 can buy you a cafe membership, which includes a 10% discount on everything you buy, plus one free drink a month. And because this is Erwan, there is always a more expensive product to buy. In this case, it's the highly exclusive Membership Plus program. Given the store's already astronomical prices, the so-called discount program... Okay, so Membership Plus program, $200 renewal... 10% savings, earn a dollar back in points for every $10 spent. You get a free drink monthly. Hopefully it's one of their smoothies. Lifestyle collection. Sounds like you get deals on their clothing brand that they partner with Balenciaga. Uh, free deliveries on $150 minimums, which pretty much is uh, a thing of milk, a balsamic vinaigrette. And like orange juice, uh, exclusive member pricing. And I don't sound like much of a deal. You get 25% off. <laughs> the prices is so high that 25% off is just pretty much covering taxes. Uh, then you could uh, share your benefits with another sucker. I mean, um, <clears throat> sorry, not sucker, uh, another uh, uh, person you could bring in. So you could shop for two. <laughs> which arguably doesn't really save you all that much has proven to be somewhat controversial which brings us back to our initial question why is the food at Erwan so damn expensive well according to the company the food costs as much as it does due to the cost of the high quality ingredients they use and there's probably at least some amount of truth to that but critics have suggested that the food at Erwan is so pricey because what they actually sell is the notion that expensive things are better. It's called perceived value, an old salesman's trick that fools customers into thinking. Look, didn't I tell y'all this? It's the same market employee as those designer brands. They brought that to the grocery store motto, perceived value. If everybody see you walking out with a few Irwin bags, they know is they know what time it is. If they see you walking in the store, it's like, oh wow, okay. It's it's all about personal image, personal appeal, a facade. You shop there. For food because you know other celebrities shop there this is all perceived value and when i was looking at a lot of those pictures how a majority of the uh skews in there is all erwin branded i automatically start to think they are doing uh oh my god i'm almost lost a train of thought on this because this is so so freaking deep but it looked like they were doing, um, you know, like co-branded with other manufacturing facilities for their for their products, like a white label uh, type of situation, um, which is very, very, very common in grocery stores. When you see um, any of those, you know, you go into your local grocery store and you see anything grocery store branded. It's not white label, it's called private label. Correction, 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 y'all. Don't kill me out here. Uh, it looked like it's all private label goods. Uh, very high end in, in their appeal uh, and how they market their products, but still, 
an apple is an apple, an orange is an orange. It all grows off the same damn tree. Um, so I think they doing the luxury, what the luxury market do for marketing, minimalistic, bold, stencil like lettering. Um, packaging is is on point, very minimalistic to give it that luxury feel. And they just charging you obscene prices. They're playing into that perceived value model. And they they mastered it because, hey, if you got this thing out and you're you're so profitable that you roll out with another nine locations, hey, the proof is in a pudding. They're doing something right. An expensive product is of higher quality than a more affordable one. And it's hard to believe that the people behind Erwan would be totally unaware of it. The other, much less charitable criticism, is that the point of the store's high prices is to keep out the poor. Erwan's exclusionary pricing all but guarantees that only the mega wealthy can afford to shop. Nah, 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 we ain't gonna play that either. Look, there's, there's certain business models where the target audience is not the middle class or the lower class. You know, if you're in the, in the sense of food, if you're, you know, uh, shopping at like, say, a family dollar, you know, it is what it is. That's for the, the lower class, um, you know, middle class. You're you're at a food line. You're at these Walmarts and Targets and stuff like that. You're at these, you know, middle class is Whole Foods. It's uh, Trader Joe's middle class. uh you know, is that the new Amazon store? Um, you know, that's all middle class. And, you know, at least in my opinion, that's middle class. Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, stuff like that. That's all middle class. Um, so obviously, you know, with a, a grocery store concept like Aaron, you're going to put your, your grocery store in the most expensive zip codes that you can find in these different markets where the average household income is like a million dollars plus and that's the only way that they could justify those type of costs because hey if i'm a movie star since this is in different parts of california and one of the major ones is in la if i'm a movie star and every movie i make it you know it brings me you know, 20, 30 million and I pop out two movies, three movies a year. What I'm not even going to bat an eye at much of anything. Because while the regular people, it, you know, just like myself, like looking at these costs, twenty dollars for milk, I'm like, are you crazy? These these affluent elites, they're wearing a house literally on their wrist their their cars they're driving is hundreds of thousands of dollars so their concept of money far supersedes any regular person way of thinking so what's crazy to us is normalized to them this is just another grocery store this is nothing more than a local corner store that looks nice. That is about it for these affluent and elites, uh, you know, chilling around there, America. Regardless of whether that was the intent. And while we understand that Tom Cruise can't exactly shop in peace at the local Ralph's, not that he does his own shopping, the rest of us will just have to fog up the windows staring in from the outside. So what do you think? <laughs> hey, and there y'all have it. Straight up. People like Tom Cruise shop there. The guy's worth what six, seven hundred million? <laughs> the Kardashians shop there on a the regular. And what's their what's their value? They at like what two, three hundred million? Hey, come on, y'all. So it's not about, you know, the poor or rich, it's just a, a dope concept. Uh they follow in another industry way of marketing and branding and they're they're killing it you know kudos to them i i just wish they would put one in like dc i would definitely shop there not like don't give me a twist not like on a regular basis but i just want to go there for the experience i want to go there and buy 
a couple of things, buy one of their smoothies, and come out with like one bag. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be the person that dropped like three hundred dollars worth of stuff on a single bag just to get that experience and to videotape it and show y'all the viewers my personal experience with that type of store so if they were like in dc if they were like in bethesda maryland um you know uh fairfax county virginia something like that then cool i'll be i'll be 100 on it y'all 100 but you know I guess I have to fly out to California to, to get that experience in the filming. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, please, please, for this one, drop your comments. I want to see what your thoughts are. I really do. All right, y'all. Till then, Chef Prime out.